Hello and welcome to Xinhua Live. This is by Yu with Xinhua News Agency. We are now in Neilingding Futian National Nature Reserve. According to the National Forestry and Grassland Administration, the world's first international mangrove center is going to be built in China's Shenzhen. Why is it going to be built in Shenzhen? Let's go and find it out. During the 14th meeting of the Conference of the Contracting Parties to the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands held in November in China's Wuhan and Switzerland's Geneva, China said that it will promote international exchanges and cooperation to protect the four bird migration routes passing through China and build an international mangrove center in Shenzhen. The establishment of the International Mangrove Center means Shenzhen will shoulder more responsibility for international exchanges and cooperation, and become an international base for global mangrove protection and international cooperation. Now we are joined by Professor Xu Hualing from the National Nature Reserve of. Neilingding Futian National Nature Reserve Administration Bureau. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our nature reserve. Hello, Professor Xu. We can see that、uh, there is over there. There, are, there are many the little fish jumping from the from the coast, and、uh, they are jumping from the mud. So, what is that fish? Well, oh, they are mud mud skippers. Actually, they are the main food for the birds. And uh, uh, this this mud fly mud skippers are resi resident in the mangroves and mud flats. They can live in water and on land. After leaving the water, they can breathe through the moist skin and the water-filled gill chambers. They can also make leap on the surface of the mud flat with the aid of the tail, and their big eyes are protruding at the top of the head. Okay, and、uh, so we all want to know that what is mangrove? Well, mangrove, mangrove is uh, uh, mangrove is is a kind of wood plant community, grows along the coastline of tropical and subtropical in tide regions, and is periodically inundated by tide water. It's also called forest on the sea water. Mm、hmm. And、uh, what are the characteristics of the mangrove? Mangroves form a unique in tidal wetland ecosystem. Due to the impact of tidal flushing, mangroves are difficult to establish as the substratum is unstable. In addition, mangroves need to cope with high water salinity and anaerobic condition. When their roots are submerged during high tide, and the dry and hot environment when the soil is exposed during low tide, in order to adapt to such tough environment conditions, mangroves develop develop amazing adaptive ability such as viviparous salt secretion and the specialized root system intact. You just mentioned that the characteristics there is the it is the Vivi Paros, right? Yeah. So, what is the Vivi Paros? Uh, yes, we can see there are、uh, some some. This is we call the candy elevator.、Yes. We can see many young babies on these trees. Actually, seedings, they are seedings of this mango tree. Seedings develop within the buds and then develop into prop. Propagules attached to the parent plant. When the propagules become mature, they detach from the parent plant and anchor in the soil. Ah,、uh, we can see that the mangroves, the plants, just regenerate in a such a special way.、Yeah. The their babies just drop into the mud and then they become grow grow up. Grow up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you just mentioned the special roots of the mangroves. Yes, here we can see some roots. They they are not the the the, the young trees. They are just the、uh, special roots of the mangrove tree.、Yeah. Just、uh, we can see this 
or just over here. Mm -hmm. These specialized root-like structures yeah. are outgrowths of the system of the Campbell roots, helping the plant to breathe above the water surface, especially in high tide. These roots extending from the trunks and the lower branches can provide extra support and stabilize the plants. Mm -hmm. So we all mentioned about the wetlands and also the mangroves. So what are the differences? Are they the same thing? Uh, no, uh, actually the wetland uh, is wetlands are areas of marsh or water where the nature or artificial permanent or temporary including areas of marine water uh, the depth of which at low tide does not exceed six meters so there are many types of wetlands including mangrove lakes rivers streams swamps sea grass and uh, in the tide of mud flat attacked yeah and why do you think uh, the mangroves are so important for the human beings? Why should we protect them? Uh, mangroves are very important for man maintaining the ecological system of the ocean and the coastal region. They provide a feeding and roosting site for diversity of wildlife, including migratory wild birds, fish, shrimps, shellfish, and crabs attacked. Mangroves act as a nature barrier protecting the shorelines and the coastal areas from damages by waves and storms. Mangroves can decrease atmosphere and water pollution. Mangroves can be also be one of the most important blue carbon ecosystems. Furthermore, mangroves can be ideal places for recreation and ecotourism. Therefore, protecting the mangrove is an important part of protecting biodiversity and implement sustainable ecological development strategy. Yes, and uh, it is from what you mentioned, I just know that the mangrove protection is not only important for the human beings, but also for, for the earth and for the ecosystems. Yes. Uh, and um, as we just mentioned that the world's first international mangrove center is going to be built here in Shenzhen. So why we have the we have this honor <laughs> and to to be to, to have the world the world's first international center uh, as one of China's earliest special economic zones, Shenzhen is a paragon of opening up and development and a global center for technology, research, manufacturing, and business. In terms of biodiversity, Shenzhen has recorded. 2,086 species of wild vascular plants and 585 kinds of native terrestrial wild vertebrates. Among them, 128 species are national key protected wild animals and plants. The city has about 300 hectares of mangroves, mainly distributed in the Futian Mangrove Nature Reserve. As the city tree of Shenzhen, the mangrove is a critical wetland species and the culture symbol of Shenzhen's spirit. People in this city of scientific and technological innovation are deeply in, uh, in awe of nature, cherishing and carefully protecting its mangrove wetland. Shenzhen Mangrove Wetland Museum can provide a strong base to the center international exchanges and the cooperation on ecological protection and the governance should be strengthened in the future. Yeah. Shenzhen Must has made a lot of efforts to protect the eco-diversity eco, uh, and also um, in the mangrove convention. Yes. Can you uh, give us some examples? Yes, we all know that as the at the start of Shenzhen's economic development, Futian Mangrove Nature Reserve was established, serves as a wintering site and a resting place for nearly 40 sound migratory birds every year, an important stopper site in the Eastern Asian Australasian Flyway. Subsequently, the Shenzhen Bay Park 
Futian Ecological Park and more connecting the Maipo in a deep Bay Ramsar site in Hong Kong. In order to protect the mangrove reserve, the former Binghai Avenue route was changed with more than many, many yuan additional <laughs> investment. <laughs> the municipal government even constructed the first noise barrier to reduce the influence of noise to the birds. Yeah, it's so interesting that before that we heard that people build the noise barrier just for the human beings. Yeah. But it is the first time that we built a noise barrier just to protect the migrant birds. Yeah. Yes, even 30 years ago. Yeah, 30 So the city yeah. uh, protects the, the Yes. And uh, we know that there are many migratory birds here in Shenzhen. Can you just count that? How many migrant birds can we really see each winter in Shenzhen? And how has the number changed? Yes, our survey data during the last six years shows that there are about 40,000 water birds of 257 species. Among them, about 60 species have numbers exceeding 1% of the global original population, such as Great Cormorant, Northern Pintail, Common Red Shank, and the Black Faced Spoonbill attacked. For example, the Black Faced Spoonbill is a globally endangered species that can only be found in the East Asia region. In last year winter, the Global Population Survey recorded 6,162 individuals, the highest count for wintering population in the Shenzhen Bay, which was recorded in January uh, 2022, was 369 individuals. Over the past decades, China's great green transformation has demonstrated the world a pragmatic approach that balances environmental protection and also the development of the society and the economy. When the tide is high, some birds, if they have short legs, they can't swim, so they will fly to this area. But now the tide is, uh, is lower, so we can see some only some a uh, uh, few birds on the on the flat. Ah, when the tide yeah. high, they will come. Okay, and I see. Now it busy feeding in the mud flat. Yeah, Professor, she just uh, uh, she just explained that the different uh, the different kinds of uh, the migratory birds, they are just uh, resting near the coast, and the wetlands dub dubbed kidney of the earth are among the top stores of the carbon, which means that their existence contributes to global efforts to reduce carbon emissions. China's relentless wetlands protection endeavors exemplifies its pledge to peak carbon dioxide emissions before 2030 and achieve carbon neutrality before 2060. China's impressive green efforts come at a time when the world's natural wetlands have declined by 35% since the convention's adoption in 1971. China's ceaseless endeavors to conceive the wetlands have reflected its distinct path to modernization, which harmony between humanity and nature is much valued. Now let's welcome Yu Yikun, the member of Shenzhen Bird Watching Society. Hi, Yikun. Hello, guys. Nice to have you here on cloud at this uh, mangrove nature reserve. Yeah, Yikun, I know that you know quite well about the, the knowledge of the birds. Uh -huh. So here I have a very interesting a fun quiz for you. All oh, right. Yes, and uh, I'll give a shot. Yeah, and now we uh, we just have some photos of the of the different kind of mangrove and the migratory birds. 
And uh, can you just guess what's the names sure. of the birds? Oh yeah. So here is the first, first one. Mm. You can see that it's a very uh, slim and slim and tall bird, and it must be a kind of heron. And yeah. uh, you can see the uh, bill; it's very sharp. Yeah. And I can see that it can catch the fish, fish really quick. So, and as it uh, wearing the white feathers, I'm sure it is called um, uh, the great egret. Wow, great egret! Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and the great egrets, together with the um, little egrets, they are um, the resident bird actually in yeah. Shenzhen, mm -hmm. Shenzhen Bay. And they usually uh, forage or rest and catch food uh, at the wetland or, or the coastal lines. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I can remember uh, that when uh, it flying across the sky, it's really a beautiful scene. And there is some. Um, uh, also very famous poem, a traditional Chinese poem that depicts such beautiful scene written by a um, uh, very famous poet in the Tang Dynasty, Yi Hang Bai Lu Shang Qing Tian, Justice Bird. Yeah, mm. it's, a, it's from the point of Du Fu. Du right. Fu, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here we come the second challenge. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Ah, it's a really cute yeah. dark. It is a um, kind of witching because it has a red, uh, dark red head uh, along its neck. And it has a very uh, uh, white patch on the wings. And oh, uh, I think I, I can see that there, it has a very yellow, uh, yellow forehead like a crown on the head. It is called the Eurasian Wigeon. Eurasian widgeon. And this kind of widgeon uh, likes to uh, forage and rest at the river, uh, river mouth, the estuary, mm -hmm. and the, usually flock, uh, rest in large flocks. Yeah. A uh, lot of them will be at the river. And um, it travels from the Siberia. Mm -hmm down to Shenzhen, ah. very a uh, long distance. Yeah. And before that, we saw that one kind of widgeon or ducks in Chinese, we, we would think that they don't, they won't fly for a long, a long way. Yeah. But this kind of Eurasian mm. widgeon, they can fly such, such a long, long route. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot of uh, migratory birds flying to Shenzhen, and uh, to name uh, 70 of them may be the uh, aquatic birds. And among these uh, 70 aquatic birds, 40 of them are commonly uh, seen. And uh, you can also see with naked eyes, not mm -hmm. using a binocular, mm -hmm. uh, 10 more, 10 more birds. Mm -hmm. And to name some, the, the gray heron, I just saw one. Wow. Uh, the great great heron. Yeah. Um, and also the um, black headed gull and the pied avocets and the black tailed uh, black tailed uh, godwit and also um, the black winged the black winged stilt. Okay. Well mm -hmm. here comes the third kind of migratory wow. bird. It's so special. Look at its bill. Yes. This is the, definitely the superstar in the Shenzhen Bay. It is the black-faced spoonbill. Oh. You, can, you can tell its name at the first sight. Yeah, right. right. And um, uh, it is, um, uh, I, I have a really small gift to you. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Why, it's so, so, so cute. cute. <laughs> and I will tell some story of it. Yeah. If you would like to, and um, there are uh, uh, around now to the Shenzhen Bay, there are more than uh, 100 uh, black-faced yeah. spoonbill yeah. fly to the Shenzhen Bay, and uh, based on the census data of the Hong Kong uh, Bird Watching Society, yeah. there are um, about 6,162 birds. Uh, uh, that are recorded in mm -hmm. 2022 this year um, and more than uh, 300 birds that were recorded in the 
Shenzhen Bay, yeah, yeah. here. Oh, the six thousand uh, birds that were reported mm -hmm. worldwide. Ah, yeah, yeah. And I think uh, with this little gift, the the kids from all over the world will envy me. <laughs> so here we just make an advertisement for the for the Neiling Ding Fu Tian National Nature Reserve. Come and watch the birds with us. <laughs> yeah, and I can I see. It. Uh, in my uh, in my uh, memory, that this bird is so cute, and when you look into their ruby eyes, they are extremely elegant when they fly parallelly with the sea line. They are agile and clumsy at the same time when they foraging for food, mm -hmm. and swaying their pipa shaped bill from side to side, and speeding up forward as they run in race. Now and then, they will definitely make you laugh when you see them at the coastal line and our Shenzhen citizen really like this bird. Yes. And uh, wherever it goes, it will become the pop star yeah, um, of the I, local news. And I do hope that you really like the gift I sent to you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I like it. Mm -hmm. And this bird is also an indicator of the health of the ecological environment. It mostly feeds on unpolluted fish, shrimps, crabs, and in the winter, we bird lovers will wait for chances to renew acquaintance with the, our old friends. The distribution area of the black-faced boombill is very narrow, meaning the wetland and coastal lines are rare home to this rare bird and they are sporadically spotted along the ch channel for migratory birds like the wet wetland in East China's Zhejiang, Fujian, and South China's Guangxi and Hainan. Oh, I see. The observation of the migratory birds requires long time waiting and a lot of patience. The photographers have filmed the migratory birds in Shenzhen's wetlands for two whole days and made a short video. Let's watch the video while we are heading to the next stop. mangrove area has increased from 22,000 hectares in 2001 to 27,000 hectares today, becoming one of the few countries in the world with a net increase in mangrove areas. Mangroves, known as coastal guardians, are heavens for birds and habitats for fish and shrimp, 
are one of the most important blue carbon ecosystems that play an important role in purifying seawater, preventing wind and waves, maintaining biodiversity, and storing carbon. As a blue carbon sink, mangrove is an important part of carbon storage by vegetations. The restoration of mangrove wetlands in the coastal area of Shenzhen ensures that the total area of mangroves will gradually expand, reversing the trend of eco ecological function degradation of the mangrove wetland system. Yikun, I wonder that, so what does the construction of the International Mangrove Center mean to the world? I think it is of great significance to us, especially our Shenzhen citizens. As Shenzhen is uh, well known as a city of volunteers, it is home to thousands of civic scientists. Some of them put their spare time and efforts in environmental studies. For example, bird lovers will report birds with flags and bands on the bird's leg during our daily watching. There is one mini program called Ben Di Guan Niao. It's developed by a um, volunteer for users to upload the observation information. As Shenzhen is an important stopover for many migratory birds, and the Eurasian Australasian flyway, many migratory aquatic birds are banded or flagged on the legs by scholars to get more knowledge of the species. The more people look for bands and leg flags, the more information will come back for the scholars. The more sightings are recorded and more valuable for the conservation of the environment will be. And Shenzhen citizens of all ages are eagerly joining popular science activities organized by schools, parks, and other organizations, institutes, uh, where they can learn knowledge on the local and neighboring inf uh, environment. With such tremendous pub public participation and support, the construction and international mangrove center may be more promising and worth more expectation. From here, we can see that in the mangrove natural reserve in Shenzhen, the migratory birds are enjoying their leisure time on the coast. I really want to join them and enjoy the leisure time with them. OK, now we will have to wrap up our Xinhua Live now. And thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time.